Hi there, this is Anmesh. How are you today? So today we're gonna learn a very interesting technique to make the spot healing brush tool much more powerful. And by the way, that will save you tons of time. Usually when we are running and gunning and we don't have much time, we select the spot healing brush tool and dab, dab, dab and remove the things that we want to remove, maybe a distraction, maybe the blemish. But the problem here is that the spot healing brush tool is not always accurate. And if you have noticed, when you use the spot healing brush tool, it tends to make things smoother and takes away the texture and that's something you don't want, right? And you have to resent the tools like the clone stamp tool or the regular healing brush tool where you have to manually determine the area that you want to sample from and replace the area with, which is great, but it is time consuming. Today we're going to learn a technique that will allow you to use the spot healing brush tool, which is more automatic and customize it in a way which will make it more accurate. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we jump into the video, special thanks to Kate Backdrops for sponsoring this amazing backdrop. They've got some really, really good ones. If you want to go ahead and check them out, check them out right here. So here we are in Photoshop and this is just an image for demonstration. So for example, you went ahead and selected the spot healing brush tool. If you cannot see it, just right click here and you'll be able to see the name of each of the two. So select the spot healing brush tool. Okay, right. Look at the icon. This is the icon for the spot healing brush tool. And this image is very simple. What we have is a gray background, 50% gray, a white spot, right? And let me just turn that off, turn that on, as you can see, and a black spot, right? Now, if you go ahead and create a new layer, okay? And select the spot healing brush tool, make sure that sample all layers is checked, okay? And then if you try to remove this spot, let's make the brush a little bigger. To make it bigger, you already know the shortcut. Hold the alter option, the right mouse button, drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it up to make it soft, drag it down to make it hard. Make it a little soft, make it a little bigger than the thing that you want to remove and then just dab once. And let's have a look. Okay, it removes it pretty clean, right? And if you dab once here, it will also do a pretty good job. Now, as you can see in this layer, in the new layer, if we just make this layer solo and you can make any layer solo by holding the alt or option and clicking this eye icon. This makes the layer solo. What does solo means? It only means that every other layer will be turned off and this layer will be turned on. Just this layer. So as you can see, it has cover ups on the areas that we just painted. If we hold the alt or option again and click on this once more, it just brings everything back and it turns back on all the other layers. But if still you're facing a problem, sometimes it might happen that if you held the alter option, clicked on this and played with something, if you hold the alt key again and click on this, nothing happens. That's the problem. Then what you need to do, just right click here and click on show hide all layers and it will show or hide all the layers. Now, what is sample all layers? Let's understand that first. Sample all layers, let's just delete that and create a new layer. This is completely empty. Now if I use the spot healing brush tool and uncheck sample all layers and try to remove this, nothing happens. Why nothing happens? Because we have turned off sampled all layers, which is an indirect message to Photoshop that sample from the current layer. And the current layer is totally empty. You've got nothing to sample from. And by the way, sampling means copying or taking materials from. You have nothing to copy stuff from. It's totally empty. So you have to check sample all layers so that it samples from this layer, this layer and the background layer, right? So that's how it works. Now, very interesting thing. And this is the crux of the tutorial. If you go ahead, click on this, you have certain options that you can choose from. And the two options that we're going to learn today are lighten and darken. Let's go ahead and select darken first. And if we go ahead and click on this one, it's gone pretty well done. Now, if you click on this one, nothing happens. Isn't that interesting? And if you select lighten, the opposite of that will happen. If, you, if I go ahead and click once here, nothing happens. If I click once here, well, it will go away. What is happening here? Think of it this way. When you select darken, let's go ahead and select darken. You tell Photoshop two things, right? When you select darken, you tell Photoshop two things. Number one thing that if I paint on a particular area, replace that area, remove that area. And that's very obvious. No matter what mode you choose, that's a taken. Number two, this is important. You tell Photoshop, whatever I paint on, replace that 
as set on number one and darken that area. And if you cannot darken, listen to this very closely, darken that area and if you cannot darken, do nothing. If you cannot darken, do nothing. So when we have selected darken and we paint on this area, since this is a bright area and that can be darkened, it just darkens it and replaces it. Since this is a dark area and we paint on it, nothing happens. Why? Because this is already dark and you cannot darken a darker pixel which is totally black from a lighter pixel which is gray. You cannot darken black with gray, can you? This is, this is complete madness, you cannot do that. That's why it doesn't do anything here. Or in technical words, let's go back. When you select darken, you tell Photoshop, first of all, target the areas which are brighter than the surrounding areas and fill that area, replace that area with the surrounding areas, right? Target that area which is brighter than the surrounding area and fill that area with the surrounding area, right? And the opposite happens with lighten. When you select lighten, you tell Photoshop two things. Number one, remove or replace the areas that I painted on, right? Number two, this is important, if it's darker, lighten it, right? If you cannot lighten it, do nothing. Simple. So when you select lighten and you paint on it, since this area is darker, it can be lightened with the surrounding pixels, it lightens that. If you paint on this, it doesn't do that. Why? Because these pixels are already brighter and you cannot make white pixels brighter with gray pixels. That just cannot happen. So that's how it works. Now let me take you through some real world examples so that you have a clear idea on how to use the tool. So, so let's get to the first one. So this is the example. Let's zoom quite a bit in. And as you can see, the lips has a lot of highlights, right? So let's create a new layer first and the spot healing brush tool selected. Let's make it a little smaller and select what? Darken, right? We don't want to lighten it. We want to darken the highlights. So let's zoom in quite a bit and select darken. Now, let's simply paint on the areas. Just dab, 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 dab on the highlights. It will not affect, now this is interesting, it will not affect the areas that are darker than the surrounding pixels, right? Lighten only targets the areas which are lighter. It does not target, this is very important, it does not target the areas which are darker. And that way you're more accurate, right? Dab, 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 dab. And just simply dab. It doesn't look very accurate, but just let's wait for some time. And let me show you a trick to make it more accurate. Now, once you've done all these things, then it's completely rubbish. It's not looking nice. All you have to do, just decrease the opacity to 0% and then increase it gradually. There you go. Have a look at the before and after. It looks much more natural, better before, after. Right? Isn't that interesting? Now, if there's a darker, say, wrinkle, see, this wrinkle is a little darker. It's already softened. And by the way, you can go ahead and download all these images, links in the description. Now, what you can do, you can take the spot healing brush tool and just select lighten because this is a darker wrinkle. And just paint on it. Let's see what it does. It does remove it. Why? Because the opacity is low. Let's create a new layer. And there we go. It's gone. And then you can go ahead and decrease the opacity to make it more natural. You don't want to remove a thing when it comes to removing wrinkles and stuff. You don't want to remove it. You just want to reduce it. Let me tell you a very interesting thing. You see, Photoshop works much more accurate when you specify things to it. Set aside Photoshop, even humans work much more accurate when you specify things to them. For example, if you visited me, maybe tomorrow, and you said to me, Unmesh, uh, could you go ahead and get me some bread? I want to eat some bread. So you didn't tell me which kind of bread. So I would get to the supermarket or the local store and I'll grab whatever is there and I'll just bring it for you. And maybe you don't like that bread, right? And maybe you like it. You don't know. And that's what Spot Healing Brush does. When you dab on it, it will just sample an area from around which it feels right. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, right? And if you told me, okay, Unmesh, go ahead and get me some brown bread, then I know which kind of bread you like. I'll go to the market, get some brown breads, and that way you will get exactly what you want. That's the clone stamp tool. Selecting the blend modes is somewhere in the middle. Right? 
Hope that makes the concept clear. But sometimes, I just want to point it out, when using the content aware field, sometimes you don't specify what you want. You just say, get me some food. And maybe I will go and get you some food which you have never tasted, which you have never wanted, but when you have it, you realize that's the best food you ever had. You don't know what's gonna happen. Life is a box of chocolates. You don't know what's gonna get. What are you going to get? Anyway, so sometimes that also happens. You gotta try it once. So let's come to the next example. Okay, let's close it, we don't want that. Okay, this example. If I zoom in, let's go ahead, and she has got some blemishes here that we would like to remove. Now have a look, this is darker, right? So we'll create a new layer, select the spot healing brush tool, make it a little bigger, and then choose lighten, because it's darker, we wanna brighten it. So let's compare the two tools. If I click once, right, it's gone. It did a pretty good job. And let's name this lighten with the lighten blend mode. And let's compare this with the normal one. So let's create a new layer and choose normal. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It did a pretty good job, but as you can see, it also brought along with it an, a dark area. If I just go ahead and zoom in, if I just turn it off, it brought along with it a dark area and we just wanted to lighten it, right? So if you look at the lighten, it didn't bring along with it any dark areas, it just replaced that particular dark area, right? And that's why I implore you, I ask you to use the blend modes along with the spot healing brush too. So you can go ahead and the best part of it is that you can just choose lighten and make the brush a little bigger than the thing that you want to remove. Make it a little bigger. There we go, done, 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 done. And by the way, to bring it, to make it more realistic, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity, right? It's much more realistic, but that looks fine with 100% opacity. And opacity is something which you reduce when you're working with things like wrinkles and other stuff, okay? Now let's get to the next example, and this is a very, very important example. In this example, as you can witness, the shiny, flat, hot spot, and it looks bad. It looks really, really bad. And we have to remove that. So let's zoom in. So these are the areas which have shined and looks oily. So all you have to do, go ahead, create a new layer. You already know what to do. Take the spot healing brush tool and select what? This is bright, the highlights are bright, so you wanna darken it, select darken, and then zoom in, make the brush a little bigger, a little softer, and then just paint on these areas. Don't paint big areas, paint small areas. I tried to do it, let me, sh let me show you what happened. I tried to paint this all at once, and uh, it didn't do a pretty good job, it just messed it all up. So it's still doing, yes, it's taking a little time, see, it messed it all up. You don't want that to happen. So paint little areas at once, just like this. And yep, I need to rev up my RAM. Right, so just like this, you ha have to go ahead and paint these areas one by one. And today my PC is a little slow. I don't know why, maybe a lot of images are open and that might be the reason. So let me just do this really quickly, I'm gonna speed this up. So as you can see, we are mostly done. Now what we have to do, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and also do it in some other areas. Now, all you have to do, just decrease the opacity. Also, there's something else. What you can do, double click on the right hand side of the layer or right click and choose blending options to open the layer styles dialog box. So let's do that. And there, what you can do, you can take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, which means that we are deleting the pixels of this layer, which are darker in the underlying layer, right? It will become clear to you. If I take it to the right, so all the dark pixels, dark areas of the layer which is beneath it, in this case, that's the background layer, will be deleted from this current layer, which is selected. So that way, will delete all the areas, all that have been painted mistakenly in the dark areas and just target the highlights. So let's go ahead and take it a little further. This is too much, this is okay. And then soften it up a little bit by just holding the alter option, clicking on it and separating it, just like that. Have a look gone, right? You can take more time and put more work into it. I've done a very quick job. So let's go ahead and decrease the opacity to make it more realistic. Just like that. And increase it 
slowly and gradually have a look at the before and after so this is the before with all the highlights and this is the after now as you can see there's one more thing that we might have to remove this blemishes this blemish and clear to create a new layer and take the spot healing brush tool and this time let's choose lighten because this is a dark blemish so lighten and just paint it let's see it did a pretty good job isn't that wonderful let's have a look at the complete before and after so this is the before this is the after very very quick all right so let's come to the last example and by the way, this image was submitted by Kareem Ben Gemma. He's a very creative portrait photographer. You gotta go ahead and check out his work right here. So uh, let's zoom quite a bit in and the wrinkles look really great. And these are the portraits in which you do not want to remove the wrinkles. But in case you want to take these off, these spots off, create a new layer and spot healing brush tool. This time what? Lighten because these are dark and just paint in these areas gone it did a very good job of taking those off before after now this one amazing right and anytime you think it's too much you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity and that's pretty much all for today just remember just a quick little recap when you select the spot healing brush tool and when you dab in with the normal mode it just guesses the area and replaces the area that you painted in when you choose darken, you tell Photoshop, darken that area on which I painted. And if you cannot darken, don't do anything. If you select lighten, you tell Photoshop, lighten that area. And if you cannot lighten, don't do anything. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe. And not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.